Hi guys, it's Slo. And uh, today uh, I wanted to go over a couple of things because uh, it seems that I need to clarify. Um, I've been asked a couple of questions and I was told that maybe I should clarify these things before I go forward with certain things. And um, I didn't think I needed the clarification seeing as how the people that I wanted uh, to reach with the book I've reached with the book and I, I, I feel accomplished and I'm done <laughs> so you know whatever um, but it has dawned on friends of mine that maybe I should reach a wider audience whatever uh, <laughs> so the first question I was asked was to, to clarify is like I should clarify who I am I suppose we'll start there who am I I'm gonna turn you a little. Okay. who am I I am well I was the girl who was a teenage runaway and I ran away from home when I was like 14 15 and um, I grew up uh, in the streets, basically, kind of. I was taken in by a lot of families. Um, some of my schoolmates, their families took me in. Um, a couple of them were gangbangers, so I, I uh, was kind of made family, but I was never inducted. I never wore colors for anyone. And yet I kept meeting more members of more gangs and clubs and, and uh, street command. That sort of, like that whole world opened up for me. And um, instead of getting in trouble with anyone or getting recruited by anyone, I became the little sister, like everyone's pet little sister. Um, and they, uh, they gave me a nickname. My nickname was Pepsi. The joke was because I was anorexic and um, hypoglycemic. And when I needed my sugar to avoid myself to, from falling into like a, a coma or <laughs> dizziness or having dizzy spells or having the tremors and the shakes, I would drink Pepsi and boost my sugar every once in a while. Highly irresponsible, completely inappropriate. Do not do this. Um, but I was able to counteract my anorexia with sugar for a while. I survived like that. It is not a way to live. But they called me Pepsi and that's kind of the point. And that was the joke of it because I was anorexic at the time. It was, it, it was how I again said nickname that I still have yet to outlive. I have long since outlived the anorexia issue kind of. And, um, Everyone seems, seems to still love that nickname for me. It is not the joy of my life, I assure you. But because of that name, I kind of became a little bit notorious, you know. I kind of knew everybody. Everybody kind of knew me in periphery. And um, I became very popular. I, I'm not going to say, like, I, I was famous or anything. I wasn't. I just, I was really popular. And not with the crowds that you would believe. I was popular amongst all of the unpopular kids. The metalheads that, that got their asses beat for being Metallica fans, I was cool to them. I was a friend of theirs. And there were a lot of them. Um, I was friends with bikers. I was friends with um, metalheads. I was friends with rocker kids. I was friends with musicians since I was a young teenager. As I grew up, I uh, met more people, more artists, folk, more um, actresses, actors, musicians, singers, dancers, and um, they knew me under a different name. They knew me as Rhett, Rhett Alexis, and um, I liked that name more because it was a nickname that I was also given by uh, the man who adopted me in, in the streets 
he was kind of my father, my dad. And uh, <laughs> inside one of the, the biker clubs that I was around growing up, um, in his club, as a point of fact, I was watching Gone with the Wind on a VCR. Way back. We're talking, yeah, years and years and years ago. I watched Gone with the Wind. And on this VCR, it would, when the movie would stop, it would automatically rewind and then play again. <laughs> uh, instead of stopping it from playing again, I allowed it to play again. And dad turned around and everyone started moaning about who the fuck is playing this movie? Why is it so long? <laughs> and um, I did that. I allowed it to happen. But dad turned around and said something to me like a week later or so where he was just like, listen, you're just like that dude, man. You don't give a shit. Don't give a fuck. You know, you, you told that bitch what for? And I, I sat there like, wow, that's a really cool compliment. And he was like, what was his name? I, that's that's going to be your name. And I was like, Rhett. He was like, yeah, yeah, that's your name. So in my 20s, I decided when I came back to New York to um, adopt that name. Because my original name, my birth name, was um, very, very French in its nature. And therefore, it, it, it was extremely difficult for everyone to pronounce. And... In waiting rooms, I literally sat there waiting for people to mispronounce my name. I was waiting to hear every possible mispronunciation of both my first and last names. And it was painful, which is why my name change became a thing I had to do. So now I am legally Nicola Sloan Prosper. Um, yeah. So there is that. Who am I? I am the girl that became popular for trying to convince everyone she didn't exist. I'm the girl who became popular for being socially awkward. I'm the girl who became known by lots and lots of people for being awkward. <laughs> and um, I'm rather loved for it. It's weird because when, when you get to know me, you either absolutely love and adore me or you really fucking hate me. And if you hate me, it's because I called you out on some, some of your shit. And uh, people don't like that. And I, um, yeah. I don't really hold my tongue very often. Don't see a need to. And um, I'm a very honest person. And if you're not, then you're really not going to like me. So there's that. Um. Okay, so we've covered the who I am, hopefully. You guys know I was known for being a teenage runaway and all of that stuff. Now, oh, well, also because my dad, the, the guy who adopted me, he was very, very well known. And everyone loved him. And so after he died, a lot of people kind of found out that I was his kid. Not that I ever built my, my reputation on being his kid. Other people have. I have never, never equated my name to his until I took his last name when, when he passed away. Uh, he knew I was going to do it. He gave me his blessing. And so I did.